You guys, we have an incredible guest today. It is Dr. Jackie Hunko. Dr. Jackie Hunko is a medically trained doctor who's certified in acupuncture, Chinese herbology, oriental medicine. She's also does integrative medicine. She is one of the cornerstone practitioners at the Institute for Neuroimmune Medicine. You guys know I'm talking a lot about the clinic that we are, um, that I'm part of and that we work with in Florida. Dr. Hunko actually completed her residency in general surgery in uh, New Jersey. And then she went on to do fellowship in allergy and immunology at the University of Miami. Dr. Hunko, as if that wasn't enough, also completed her master's degree in public health and uh, worked in preventative medicine from the University of Miami, as well as a certificate in integrative medicine. She also has a master's in Chinese medicine from acupuncture and massage college. Before joining our group, Dr. Hunko was a clinical researcher at the University of Miami and Miami's VA center for 15 years, where she dedicated her time to working with veterans in various facets of their health spectrum, incorporating the use of acupuncture for mental health issues. Dr. Hunko, it is my pleasure to have my community have the opportunity to have this visit with you and to put even more power on their plate as they uh, explore all the ideas towards health and wellness. Clinical researcher at University of Miami, VA Medical Center for 15 years, where she dedicated her time to working with veterans in a variety of facets of their health spectrum, incorporating the use of acupuncture for mental health issues. Dr. Hunko, thank you so much for being here in my kitchen today. I cannot um, express enough about how fascinated I am with what you do um, and the people that you help. So thank you for being here today. Thank you, Haley. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. It, it is. This is going to be good, you guys. So, okay, where do we start? Let me first, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions today. My community has a list of questions when I told them that I was going to be speaking with you um, that they wanted me to ask on their behalf. And that's why I do this is, you know, I get this unique opportunity to meet and work with brilliant individuals like yourself. And my community needs to have that information to help their journey, their health trajectory and their wellness. So first of all, I want to start by just give me a little bit of background. Like, I know that you do a lot in the veterans space and that you're at the Institute of Neuroimmune Medicine, but, but how did you get into this, this fascinating field of medicine? All right, Haley, that's a great question because I've had quite a journey. I always wanted to become a physician and most specifically, I wanted to become a surgeon. Oh, yeah. So then I went off to medical school. I finished medical school and I got a residency in surgery, did one year of that and then decided it was not for me. So I switched to internal medicine where I met Dr. Klimas because I decided to do a fellowship in allergy and immunology. So you're talking about Dr. Nancy Klimas. She's the director of the Institute of Neuroimmune Medicine. And how many years ago was this that your guys' paths crossed? 25 years ago. Wow. I learn more about you every day. I love this. Okay. So you started with Dr. Klimas then, and then what happened? And then while I was taking my, while I was doing my fellowship, I decided to, they were offering a course, an acupuncture course for physicians at U- University of Miami at the time. And I decided to enroll in that course. At that time, I was going through some emotional issues, taking, you know, everybody has anxiety nowadays, but I had, you know, had to be on medications. And I took the course and I was fascinated by just started what acupuncture could do for mental health. So I decided to start getting through my treatments and I got off all meds. So then I said, you know, that's when I said, I'm going to switch my, the way I'm going to treat patients. So I did a master's in preventive medicine. I did a master's in integrative nutrition. And then I did my final master's in Chinese medicine. Ooh, that's amazing. That that's a lot. It is yeah, a lot. It is a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to just take you back because I think you said something that is really important. And I know I've shared with you and my community knows this, that, you know, I was planning on going to vet school and being a veterinary surgeon. I was a surgical tech in the animal uh, industry at the time. Um, and a, an autoimmune disorder just was debilitating for me. And, you know, a ton of meds and a ton of um, 
disaster from a health perspective. And that just completely changed the trajectory of my life. I didn't know that about you. And I, I think yeah. it's important that we just, yeah, for a second, talk to people out there right now that are maybe struggling with anxiety and depression. And, um, you know, I'm not saying, you know, I had the opportunity to not be on medication. I'm not saying that that's the path for everyone, but it's really nice to know that there are things that can help the body come into a new homeostasis and heal. And so can I just ask you personally, like, what was it? Was it acupuncture specifically? Was it, was it the whole integrative aspect? Like, what do you think created more support for your body? For you, in, you're in your journey. All yeah. right. So in like my what, case, what rocked your world? I can tell you. I yeah. think it was a combination of the acupuncture, the lifestyle changes. You know, I started exercising more. The nutrition played a key role. Yes. You know, because I always tell patients when I see them, I say, you know, part of your, what you eat, you are what you eat. You know, yes. if you're eating good food, you're going to feel good. Yes. And, 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 and the same, the same with the other is if you're consuming a lot of neurotoxins and a lot of, you know, obesogens or things, right. chemicals, things that cause you to be out of balance in order to process them, it's going to perpetuate that. Wow. That's, that's, that's actually fascinating to me. You did three masters and talk to me a little bit about what it's like to do a master's in Chinese medicine. As you know, my mom is, is got her master's in Oriental medicine. And so right. I, I grew up around that, but what it, what it kind of learnings is that what exposure do you have as a doctor to those kinds of things? Well, for me, it was fascinating because, you know, once I did the acupuncture course for physicians, it was very small. Cause I mean, it was small in comparison to you only really learn the acupuncture. And you learn it um, superficially. So I wanted to dive in deeper. Doing the master's in Chinese medicine exposed me to not only the acupuncture, but the herbology, which is fascinating. So you're, you know, you're board certified in, in Chinese herbs, which is amazing. Wow. You know, you learn about the nutrition based in Chinese medicine practices. You learn about body work, other energy healing, like Tai Chi, Qigong, things that all have to do with moving your chi. So to me, those three years were fascinating to learn wow. all these wonderful things to apply. Yeah, absolutely. And and I, I want to just let everybody know at, at uh, Institute of Neuroimmune Medicine, the majority of our patients are dealing with some sort of complex um, neuroimmune disorder, right? So I know you've done a lot of work with the veterans in Gulf War syndrome. And can you share a little bit about like maybe share some case experience because, because everybody out there in our community right now, you know, they either know somebody that's dealing with MECSF chronic fatigue. They know somebody that's dealing with, you know, Parkinson's, ALS, all the neuroimmune disorders, reactivation, EBV, um, but Gulf War syndrome and a lot of the veterans um, stressors are something that you've really had a deep dive into. Can you share a little bit of that? Like, what is your experience there? Okay, well, while I was at the VA, one of the pilot little projects that I did was a program for veterans who had PTSD. A lot of those patients had not only the P PTSD, because they have an overwhelming amount of other things going on. So I only use the ear. So I did a project just using the auricular acupuncture to, to manage their PTSD symptoms, whether it was either the anxiety, the nightmares, the flashbacks, the insomnia. And over those 12 weeks that I saw them, their, their symptoms improved dramatically. Uh, that's awesome. So, so for those of you that aren't familiar, maybe haven't had acupuncture, you know, like I said, we kind of grew up with it. My kids grew up with it. My daughter, every time still to this day, when my mom walks in the door, she's 20 now says, make me a unicorn grandma, because my mom used to do a lot of, you know, acupuncture around the crown and, and in front of the forehead from since my kids were little. Um, but auricular acupuncture is where they utilize the points in the ear. And, and is it when you see those people with those little bead patches? Is that mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that what that is? It, can you explain to all of us, like, you know, we've seen people with needles from head to toe with a couple points. What is it when you go in the ear? Well, the ear is considered a microsystem. Oh, which, okay. So you could treat the whole body by just using the ear. And one of the other fascinating things about the ear that it's innervated by the vagus nerve, which is the nerve that's responsible to bring us into our parasympathetic 
state, which is the rest and digest, which is the healing phase. So okay, people, well, I'm gonna okay, I'm gonna have go you say that one more time for my community because that was huge. So the ear itself, what happens to it with the vagus nerve? So so the, so stress modulation, right? Is right. is the nervous system, and and what I'm I just want to make sure that we all get this because this is like a big learning for us that have stress and have anxiety and. So the ears and microsystem, but you also said that it has something to do with the vagus nerve. What does that right. mean? So we have two systems in our body. We have the fight or flight. Okay. So we, we're in that um, sympathetic system, which is the one that like if we're being chased by a lion, so we're always, you know, our adrenaline goes up, everything goes yep. up, your heart rate goes up. So what happens is the other system, which is the parasympathetic is the rest and digest. That's the slower one that keeps everything in peace and at bay. So the ear is innervated by one of the, the parasympathetic, the vagus nerve, which is the one responsible for the driving the parasympathetic nervous system. So by introducing a needle into the ear, it's amazing how patients just relax. Wow. I mean, it's that's, quite impressive. And then yeah. that's why it's used for so many addictions, for anxiety, for PTSD. People use it for weight loss. I mean, so many, so many issues that you could just fix with just putting needles in your ear or even seeds, like you mentioned. So there are these little beads and you'll see sometimes, in, in fact, I just saw a client the other day and her two daughters, her little girls, both had little beads in their ears. And, um, and I said, oh, you know, did they go get acupuncture? And she said, yeah. And um, there's just a lot with the kids going back to school right now with COVID and the mask and no mask. And, you know, I, I won't even mention the violence at schools and things. And she was saying that it just really, really helped both of the kids with their anxiety going back to school this, this, um, this year. And I, th I thought that was genius. I was very excited for them. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in the, in the veteran space, um, you know, there's definitely a lot of medication that is prescribed and, and, and with a lot of individuals that deal with PTSD, what do we see with acupuncture? I mean, do we see a change in the chemistry after acupuncture reported symptoms changing? Like there's so much study now in acupuncture, but, but what did you see clinically? Well, I saw uh, an improvement in their symptoms. Their sleep gets better. Their anxiety got better. You know, as far as like laboratories, we were not able to do that at that point. Got but it. I know that, you know, looking at different studies and reading different articles on acupuncture, now they do measure and they're able to see, you know, the immune modulation and the immune effects caused by acupuncture. You know, there's less inflammation, less brain inflammation, less systemic inflammation. You know, it, it helps balance certain hormones. It helps since it deals with stress, it helps balance the cortisol, which is the stress driving hormone. Right. So we're right. seeing so many wonderful things. And one of the things that I share with a lot of my community and clients is it's, you know, stress is a big deal. And, and I want to talk to you about that because I know being at the Institute um, that we, we see patients that come in from all over the world and, and that a lot of driving force of whether it's the precipice for the disease or it's, or it's, you know, lighter fluid for the disease, like an autoimmune disorder or something, stress is a big deal. But one of the things that, um, and it, it's the big deal kind of in a way, right. But one of the things that is always impresses me about acupuncture is it's really easy for me to say, you know, I need you to lower your stress level or I need you to do lifestyle modifications. But acupuncture in our clinical setting is a really passive way for the energy or the chi. I'm going to totally butcher this, Dr. Hunko. So <laughs> you get to jump in and, and correct me, please. But it's, it's a way to rebalance the body without the body having to make a ton of effort, right? So they get to lay there or sit there. They get to, you know, maybe in, in your space, you know, get exposed to beautiful, relaxing music. It's a gorgeous environment, all of that. But, but really profound shifts are made in the limbic system and the endocrine system and the mm -hmm. immune system passively for the patient. So, so I think sometimes when a person is out of control of their stress environment, their endocrine environment's gone out of control, their immune system's gone out of control. It's like, I've seen just crazy shifts without, you know, the, the effort that the patient has to put in is show up on time, right? <laughs> show up, right. show up for you. 
So, so talk to me about, about stress and how you feel like it impacts the body as a whole. Cause I know my community is out here going, you know, I need validation that stress is killing me or stressing me or perpetuating disease. And then we're going to talk about like what they can do about it. But, but tell me how important monitoring, measuring, or, in, or doing an intervention like acupuncture for stress can be. Okay. So I think that for me, stress is like, when we go back to the roots of an illness and a disease or a symptom, you have to always, in functional medicine, we always try to find that root in order to make the symptoms go away with time. So stress, in my experience, which has been for 20 something years dealing with this, it's the number one, because stress could cause inflammation anywhere in the body. I mean, I have athletes that I treat that have recurring pain. And if you don't deal with their stress, your pain isn't going to go away. Yeah. Right. People with autoimmune disease, it just over, you know, it overstimulates the immune system. Acupuncture does the opposite. It downregulates the immune system. So it's all stress. Stress is, to me, it's one of the worst things that unfortunately we're all exposed to. So we need to learn tools and have tools in order to be able to deal with it. it yeah, I, I love that you said that. It's also though one of the most, I'm going to use the word evasive. Like I always imagine, I don't know, when I was a kid, this is totally terrible. We used to break the thermometers and try to hold onto the mercury, you know, and it would slide yeah. through every crack and crevice. Oh, Sometimes, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> don't worry. I've done lots of chelation in my, in my journey. But it always, stress always reminds me of that feeling, right? It's like you you want to kind of try to contain it and hold on to it. You want to maybe try to channel it in a different direction. Um, but it seems to just slide in through the cracks. It seems to be, you know, pervasive when you turn on the TV, you turn on social media, right. um, relationships, work, environmental toxins, you know, the, the list goes on and on. And and for what I've witnessed, you know, in our clinic and in, in my past from a clinical perspective is like you said, the downregulation of the pro-inflammatory, the immune hyperimmunity, the, and, and, you know, we were in the fertility space for many years with acupuncture, the homeostasis that happens right. in, in our endocrine or our, our hormone system. So, so it's, it's really easy to say or write down the words like eliminate stress, right? But the acupuncture for me is a way for patients to go in and almost have it done for them. I don't know if you, if you, I, I describe it to my community kind of that way, but you could probably articulate what's happening in the body in a much more sophisticated way. Right. And yes, I wish it was a quick fix. And then for some people it is, some people come in for treatment and automatically from the first time they get an acupuncture treatment, they're like, wow, I feel so much better. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the majority of the cases, it's going to, it's an ongoing thing. So it's not right. like, you know, a, a pill that you could no. take, like a Xanax, it's going to take your stress away. Right, it's right, right. It's not going to happen. It takes so you, time. If you had your dream, would you see patients twice a week, once a week, three times a week in an ideal situation? I think twice a week yeah. is ideal. Yeah, and I, I do, agree. And I do have some that, that are able to afford it because it is all about, you know, being able to afford it, unfortunately. Right. You know, and um, so they come in twice a week and they see results better than somebody who would be able to come only once a week or once every two weeks because of their financial means can't get them there. Right. And and I think that some of the auricular that you're like you said, with the seating, some of that can kind of stretch their visits too, right, because they're getting that stimulus to those acupuncture points long after their visits over. Is okay, that am I, I always okay. I always send them home with their ear seeds. Or, you know, whether it's the little beads or the, you know, the authentic like ear seed. Yes. And yes. then, um, so then they do great because that holds them off for at least, you know, sometimes a week, sometimes even two weeks, they come back and they still have the ear seeds on. So in our clinic, right, we're the, I am, how can I say this? It's extremely financially uh, reasonable acupuncture is in our in our practices, like in, in Beverly Hills, or even in Fort Lauderdale, um, our practice, our clinics in Encino that are outside of the university. I mean, it's, it's sometimes almost 10 times, <laughs> believe it or not, yeah, what agree. we charge. So, so we're lucky that at the Institute for Neuroimmune Medicine, you know, we have a lot of university support to treat our patients, and we can treat them in an in a cost 
much more um, cost effective way, which is which was shocking to me. I just to share that with you. When I first came in, I went, Oh, my wait, our prices are what you know, it was very, very exciting for me. When a person comes in to our clinic, are they um, always seen, you know, in a multidisciplinary approach? Or can someone come in and see you for acupuncture and all the disciplines that you have under your umbrella independently? Like, can I send my girlfriend that that's having really bad menopause symptoms right now? I was just thinking about it. And she's in Florida. Um, and I, and I just, you know, I just have seen time and time and time again, especially in the female hormone, uh, syndrome transitions. Can someone come in and just make an appointment with you? Yes, absolutely. I mean, a lot oh. of the referrals that we have are from our patients, you know, our providers, you know, refer to me, you know, when they have a patient they think will benefit from acupuncture or the other modalities, but just people random. I mean, I have some children that I've been seeing at the center also, you know, children with autism, with ADHD. Yes. Yeah, it's a big one. And and so I want to jump gear, shift gears here for a second, jump gears too. Um, let's talk a little bit about our center specifically. And let's talk a little bit about, you know, kind of our lofty goals, right, of, of what we're wanting to do, because you just mentioned autism. And um, we are looking right now at creating um, a, a, so we're at the Institute of Neuroimmune Medicine, just so everybody kind of knows we're part of we are uh, part of Nova NSU. We are in campuses in, oh my goodness, Davie, Kendall, Kendall. where else are we? Tampa. Tampa. <laughs> Puerto <Yeah>. Rico. <laughs> and we're looking at, we were just talking about another location in, na, 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 na. I can't remember the name of the place. Um, I'll think it's of it. Delray Beach. I don't know. Yeah. Delray. We, we looked at Delray and then, Del Rey. yeah. And then, um, I'll think of the other one. We just had, I can't remember in a meeting, but, but our, our goal is to look at medicine globally. And, and it's one of the reasons why, you know, obviously you and what you do and your expertise is such a cornerstone of, of, of all of this. So, so what do you envision for us in the next five years? Like, how do you see it going with us? Well, I see our Institute, as a center of excellence, where we're going to be able to, you know, a patient can come in and be able to hopefully what we, you know, we're, we're our, I think part of the plans are to have a hotel where patients who travel from other places could come and stay mm -hmm. because it would be in the center where you would have all these modalities working together. I mean, we have a lab that's one of the best in the country yes. for the immune, for immune studies. You know, we have, we're going to plan to have the hyperbarics, which is going to be amazing what that's going to do. And we have the best practitioners. We have the best in every field, you know, from yes. neuro, from immunology, environmental medicine, functional medicine, integrative medicine. We have the best of the best working on our teams. So I think, you know, I just see it like a center of excellence where patients come in and they can receive all this wonderful care under in one place. Oh, I, I got chills when you were saying that we're working really, really hard in that direction. It's kind of informally already happening, right? When, when, when we're in the cl is. clinic and see, yeah. yeah, which is really, which is really um, very, very cool and, and, and exciting. So the thing that strikes me every Friday when we have our clinicals and we all kind of get together and, and brainstorm and stuff is that not once have I ever heard that this is a good idea because of some business structure or model that we're following. It's a good idea because we get the patients that are suffering and this has been a decisions out of necessity on behalf of the patients, right? Like we see what's happening with our veterans. We see what's happening with our chronic fatigue syndrome patients with long, uh, long COVID now and, and Epstein-Barr virus reactivation. So, so it's, it's a very interesting, um, uh, design that's kind of happening because it's out of necessity for just like you and I, right. We were on one path, <laughs> a very different path. We had our own personal physical health, neurochemical, you know, struggles. And we learned that it takes a variety of modalities to make this complex body whole, right. And so 
Um, what does the patient that's in the, the person that's my community member that's in DC, Kansas, Montana right now, that isn't going to come to Florida to see you, what kinds of lifestyle things can they do to mitigate balance stress to mimic the profound effects of acupuncture? Okay, that's a great question, Haley, because <laughs> obviously, unfortunately, we cannot have everybody come see us, even though it would be amazing. Um, but we I are was, teaching. But we yes, are, I just we are teaching. Yes, we are teaching. We're starting master's programs and fellowship programs. We have a fellowship program right now in environmental medicine that's a go. And so we are teaching. We want, we want everybody to know we believe you. We are here to support you. And we are also here to create the doctors of the future that will care for you in the way that we do at the Institute. So I, I just wanted to throw that in because because I, I, I know that it's it's hard if you're out there right now um, and you're not seeing Dr. Jackie. Um, so, so Jackie, what types of things can they do? Let's, let's, let's break it down. Let's do first that they can do at home. And then also let's like help our community communicate with their current practitioner a little bit too. So, so first, what can they do at within home. them? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, one thing I always mention to patients is you know, when you wake up in the morning, you know, just take out a couple minutes and meditate meditate on positive things. You know, when you, we meditate and if you see monks are one of the most healthiest people on this planet, cause they just, you know, they, they're so stress-free. So by, by meditating right. and doing breathing exercises, we are able to activate that vagus nerve by doing the correct breathing exercises. Cause obviously we all breathe. <laughs> if not, we wouldn't be here. Do but, you like, do you like alternate nostril breathing? Do you like that? I do. Or, I mean, okay. it's not for everybody. I always say okay. you have to find what's right for you. But some people, could, you know. Could you and I work together to put together like a little handout on alternate nostril breathing and then give me two other or, or one other option on breathing techniques? Is there, is there Ooh. other ones? The four, seven, eight is very, Ooh. yeah. Will you describe that to me? Well, usually with that one, you just inhale for four breath. I mean, four seconds, you hold it in for seven and then you exhale slow and controlled for eight. Ooh. Okay. Guess what I'm doing as soon as we get off. Four, seven, eight. <laughs> four, seven, eight. Okay. We're going to put together you guys, something that you can download, um, that'll have this great information in it. Cause I know, um, how life-changing this can be. And I want to make sure you guys have access to it. Okay. So four, seven, eight, tell, I'm just going to meditation. Okay. I have a, I call it a squirrel brain. My brain just okay. goes a billion miles in directions. I'm going to get a little free advice here, you guys, for myself. Um, so it, an individual like me has a really hard time meditating because my brain goes a, a billion directions. Someone said to me one time, just focus on something and redirect and redirect and redirect. Right. Like, yeah. Is, is that effective? Is that okay? That I, that's the best I can do. That is. And that's what I always, cause I have the same problem. Like I see, <laughs> you know, I'm like thinking, okay, I have to breathe, relax. And then I was thinking, Oh gosh, look what time it is. I have to do this or some of the dog barks and totally distracted. Or my, my breath sounded funny, you know, yes. maybe I should get, you know, that I go, should I get a CT scan? That was a weird breath. I mean, my brain just, I know enough to be dangerous. And my brain just goes a million miles an hour. Absolutely. That so happens. what can people like that? Like, so, so pick an object, pick something, pick a, and, redir a and just redirect your thoughts. Okay. And How take, long do yeah. you think? Oh, go ahead. Please. I think, you know, you only have to start and, you know, it's like training your brain. You train to meditate. So only, even if it's only a couple minutes a day to start, it's, it's more than you did yesterday. Can you do it with your eyes open? Like, could you focus on it, on an image? You could. Or, okay. I mean, even though it's where it works best with your eyes closed for some okay. people. No, I'm going there. I, I I'm taking it to heart and I'm going to, yes. Cause I, I'm just not good at it. So, okay. I love the breathing techniques. I love the meditation and I love that you just, I mean, you just gave me permission to do it in a way to do it the best that I can. Cause I'm a, I try, you know, to, to do it right. Cause I want to be well, you know, and then I give myself such grief for not being good at something. Right. Cause it's yeah. not easy. It's like yoga. When I explain to people, you know, the, I mean, cause yoga is another thing, Tai Chi, yoga, Qigong, all those exercises are great. I mean, they're great for the body, great for the mind. You do a lot of breath work while you're doing those, but people are like, Ooh. Oh, I'm not, I'm not flexible. Well, you don't have, I mean, you're not going to be a pretzel 
from the from the beginning. You have to work, <laughs> work your way there. I mean, little by yeah. little, you don't have to do yoga for an hour. You don't have to do Tai Chi for an hour. As long as you do 10, 15 minutes, just get that blood moving, that chi moving. And so, so it matters. So- Okay, the energy moving, the chi moving. Right. Remember, your blood is what delivers. If you're taking vitamins and supplements right now, the blood That's is what right. delivers all those nutrients to all the organ systems and functions, secretes the hormones. So, right, get the blood moving. I, I, I maybe we'll put a little something about a description if it's okay for those of us that aren't. I, I grew up around it, but a lot of people in our community, and I wouldn't if my mom didn't do acupuncture and you know be in the oriental medicine space. I wouldn't have experience when I was a kid. I would go to. Roxbury Park in Beverly Hills. Um, and they would have both Tai Chi and Qigong classes. And it just was fascinating to me it to is. watch. And what was crazy is a lot of individuals were in their 80s and 90s yes. plus out there doing this in the outside and I and, and just watching their bodies move. It was it was incredible and, and it was beautiful. Um, one thing that you hadn't mentioned yet, but that I don't know if you know, I do this, you do some sound therapies and I love yes. to stand outside your door and, and, and benefit, <laughs> benefit from them. Can you, can you share, maybe we could record a little MP3 and, and add that to our download for, for somebody, um, you know, benefit, especially, yeah, especially for stress. Like it, it, you know, it's, it's amazing. I did it a lot with my kids when they were babies and I, you know, colicky or crying and the bowls and the sound therapies. I mean, they would just, they would just, it was like somebody washed over them, something washed over them, a sense of kind of calmness. And, you know, they would stop crying and get out of that hysteria. Um, And I just can't help but believe that as adults, that would be super powerful. Can you explain what I just kind of butchered to everybody? Well, I think sound is, very healing. And the, and we see there was the study done with water that was done by a Japanese scientist that he spoke, you know, he played different tunes and the water formed beautiful molecules and crystals mm-hmm. and it got beautiful colors. And the ones that didn't got like, they were, the water was totally different. So our bodies are 70% water. So yes. if you, play these wonderful and each frequency works on a different level cellular level and our cells communicate through frequencies so the cells the cell communication the fact that our bodies are mostly water so that it's going to re- frequencies are going to resonate within the body and cause healing so I, I think it's oh, i think it's great i mean and one another example that i give patients is the the tuning fork Yes. When I do the tuning for which is different frequencies, I give the example of lithotripsy, which is what they use to break down kidney stones. It's high wave frequencies. If that is so powerful to be able to do that to a kidney stone, just think of the effects it could do in the human body. Wow. So, so, okay. It's pretty what amazing. I, it is amazing. And, and what I love and what I, is that you have just such a vast background of medical exposure and experience. And what you just said, you know, like, oh, of course, that's what they do to break down kidney stones. I, I have no idea about that. You know, I, I don't, I don't have that knowledge base. Um, but the, but to understand that there are modalities that are well researched and well adopted that are used, right, off of the principles of oriental medicine or Chinese medicine. Right. And, and it's been that way, you know, for a, a really, really long time. Thousands of um, years. Thousands yeah. of years. Yeah. Way before antibiotics yeah. or any, any, anything of that nature. And, and when I talk about um, one of the biggest things that our community talks to uh, me about, our team about, is a lot of times struggling to get decent or adequate care at all. And even broaching or talking to their physician that they have, whether it's their primary care doctor or their cardiologist or whatever, and talking to them about wanting to incorporate complementary therapies and or even using it as a replacement therapy, like, you know, they want to try maybe to use less of their anxiety medications and see an acupuncturist twice a week. It's it's hard because you and I are like, duh, yeah, right? Like, or at least I'm that way. You know, of course you want to do, you know, anything and everything you can do to have your body function at an optimal level and and drug and surgery intervention be, you know, the option that is, is, is if the body can't do it on its own, right? But how does someone 
that is gets, I mean, gosh, I wish you could see some of the letters or the comments we get in our community, you know, where their doctor just says, I don't believe in that. I don't think that works. And that's well, how can it's very hard. It's, it it's is. hard. Yeah. And especially because they go to the doctor already not feeling well, right. A feeling it's, extremely vulnerable, not versed, not with, you know, three master's degree, a medical degree, you know, the vast Mm -hmm. experience that you have. Can you help our community think of ways that they can kind of communicate to their doctor when they get that kind of of pushback? Because the other thing is a lot of them just say, well, to heck with it, I'm going to do it myself. But then they feel like they don't have a team, a cohesive team. And let's say they come back and and they're feeling less anxiety and they want to tell their doc like, hey, can we maybe taper down a little bit or maybe their focus is better or their periods are more regular. And they want to talk to their doc and their doc, they feel like they've kind of abandoned their team by doing something that their doctor said they don't agree with or believe in. So, I so we need your, we need hard. your help. Yeah. I think it's hard to do because I, I get that a lot because I, I see a lot of patients that come to me. Well, the num- number one thing I treat obviously is, you know, the stress, the immune system and then pain. But when I see other patients that come in, for example, with high blood pressure and they're on two or three meds and I said, well, let's try to get you off the meds. They're so scared to tell their doctor right. that they're doing acupuncture. Or right. they're doing nutritional interventions to help them deal with the high blood pressure. They're scared. Right. And I said, right. You know, you have to educate the doctor sometimes, you know, sitting I, down. Okay. Education you, you, is wait, key. Education is key. And what you just said, if we don't talk about, if we, you didn't, I mean, everything that you've said has been so helpful and so brilliant, but you guys, we just got permission for sharing our experience, other doctors experience double blind studies, white papers with our physicians, right? So we have this, I, in our community, we have this sheet, I call it's a Dear Dr. Sanders letter. It was a doc, a doc that I had worked with out of, I think it was Ohio. It was really adamant that one of our clients not do nutrition and herbals and acupuncture and even massage therapy. He said, you know, we might as well light your money on fire to keep yourself warm at night. I mean, he's really not uh, a, a, an advocate. So we sat down and we wrote him this letter and for this was with one of my clients and now it's a template that my clients use to help communicate with their physician and it's a way of expressing like what's going on in their body but also their their belief system in health and wellness and their curiosity in health and wellness right it doesn't have to be like i'm a diehard like me my mom's an acupuncturist i grew up with it my kids grew up with it you know i had it in the hospital when i was delivering my kids I, I come from a different position, but even, even a person that wants to explore or have a curiosity. So we fill out this, um, this sheet together, but I think what you just said, which is don't be afraid to educate your physician or your care partner. Right. Um, yeah. And, and bring things to the table with this doc. We actually have a very long relationship and I always tell him that I tell him on him all the time. He's completely changed things in his health, his life, how he treats his patients. He gives out more fast metabolism diet books. We have another doc at UCLA that gives out a ton too, but I mean, he constantly gives out the books, but he was the precipice for me to say enough with this one particular client. Like we're going to write him a letter and we're going to let him know that in, in, in medical school, and even in masters and for me in nutrition, they talk about cultural competency, mm-hmm. which is understanding where your patient is, where they want to go, what their belief system is, what their cultural exposures are, um, you know, their idea and valuing that first and foremost, it goes away some, somehow, not in, definitely not in all doctors, but in, I, I, there's too many people in my community having the same problem. And, and what you just shared that you see it with your patients to not put kind of energy and effort. So, so in our community, we thought the dear Dr. Sanders letter, what do you tell patients to do when they're, when they're expressing that concern? Do you say, let's write the doctor a note? Do you say, do you give them verbiage that helps them articulate? I do. I, you know, I explain to them how to communicate with their provider and sometimes I'm able to communicate with that provider if they're open on their behalf, on their behalf. That's, you know, to work together, like, let's say a patient with hypertension, a lot of the infertility patients that I treat, I work along with the practitioner, but infertility is another realm because they are totally on board with acupuncture. Oh yeah. Yeah. Infertility docs are big on acupuncture. And even if like turning the baby for breach 
presentations. Yeah. I mean, they're like, there's no, you don't have to educate them. They're gun ho on that. They're gun ho. Yeah. Well, you know, they're, they're in the business of statistics, right? right? Their success is a, is a beautiful, viable baby. And so with all efforts on board, yeah, my mom goes in during, you know, IVF, ICSI, yeah. you know, she, she, my mom's in, in with the patient during all the procedures all the time. So so it's interesting that you say that because so the fertility doctor, the outcome or the success of that doctor is is a baby, right? And the health of the mom and 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 patient. With a doctor that's maybe seeing a person for blood pressure, there isn't even that pressure on the physician unless it comes from the patient to get the patient off of meds or the least meds possible. There's there not isn't. even that. And that's yeah. the unfortunate part. Yeah. Wow. That's... We are, unfortunately, the other unfortunate thing is that we are a pill driven right. medical system. Yes. You know, it's always everything could be fixed with a pill. Yes. And I think totally the opposite. I think, you know, before you have to, if you have an infection, yes, you might have to resource to taking an antibiotic or you need your gallbladder, you have gallstones, you might have to have surgery. But I would try definitely nutrition, other modalities before you jump and to start taking medications. Yeah. And the, the biggest reason for that is all the side effects and complications. I mean, right. you know, I wish that surgery and, and I, I would, I would, if there was a, a magic pill, I mean, great, you know, as long as it didn't have the tremendous complications associated with it in our, in our practice. And in, you know, when we're dealing with people that have hypertension or high cholesterol, definitely diabetes, gestational diabetes, and we're working, you know, heavily on nutrition and lifestyle modification and even exercise, you know, we are very clear that look, it's not that I'm anti metformin or, you know, I mean, I have my own opinions after going through what I went through that I hold as a personal value. You know, I, I, I was trashed, trashed by the meds that I was on. And I, and I was frustrated. I, I have now I've taken that frustration and turned it into action, but for a lot of years in my twenties, and I think that's why I had a lot of anxiety and depression and, and, um, I think I was so angry that it happened to me. You know what I mean? And I was mad at my immune system for attacking myself. And there's a lot, a lot. Of, <laughs> this is this is my session, guys. Now, there's a lot of things that I had to work through and continue to work through to kind of begin to heal with that whole exposure and experience. But genuinely, there's a lot of things that cascade when the body is not supported, and that and that it's that the health metabolic pathways of health are not nourished, fed supplemented, you know, uh, energy work, you know, whether it's doing it through Qigong or, or meditation. So, you know, my whole community knows that I'm obviously I'm a big foodie, right? So I talk about, you know, not what not to eat from a macro perspective. Like I'm not anti-carbs as everybody knows. I'm especially with depression and anxiety. I mean, the, the we manufacture right. the hormones that help regulate that. And I'm also, you know, I personally take a lot of supplements and, and with my um, brain stuff and, and kind of managing my personal stress level, um, you know, I am a big advocate for magnesium. Is there, is there any other nutrients that you felt were beneficial to you that you like? Okay. I like magnesium also. I always recommend magnesium for sure. The other is a good B complex methylated form. Yes. I recommend for patients with anxiety, GABA supplementation, because GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain. In the brain. It helps us relax. So, so, so explain that to me a little bit. What is that? Cause, cause I, I always take with my magnesium, I take GABA, um, taurine and L-theanine that that's like my, my magical formula that, mm -hmm. that helps me with memory cognition, but also like, I don't want, I know I don't want stress to slow me down or make me feel foggy or overwhelmed. So I can't do caffeine and stimulants like that just doesn't work for me. So, so GABA is like magical in my brain. And I, and I, part of me kind of understands it, but what you just said, can you elaborate on that a little bit? It makes yeah. me just really think things through. Well, I'm, right. I'm, I'm very adaptive on magnet on GABA. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. So we have different um, neurotransmitters in our brain. We have the excitatory, which is like the ones that make us crazy. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, we have a lot I've got of those. lots of those. You yes. Know, the serotonin. Yes. <laughs> all those, you know, norepinephrine, epinephrine. And then we have the inhibitories. GABA is one of the major inhibitory neurotransmitters. But I always tell patients when you take a, uh, something with, with GABA, it's like taking a natural form of Xanax without all the side mm. effects. Yes. Well, I've never personally had Xanax, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> I, I would think I was afraid I'd like it too much or, you know, who knows? Um, I, I also am like super reactive at whenever I take something pharmacologically, you know, my lips swell, my face swells, oh, no. my community, my communities watch that. Yeah. I'm like, just, I just don't tolerate it. But, but that's, that's interesting because I've always wondered, like, there's a part of, you know, just that clarity and that just that it's like someone lets the air out of the balloon a little bit. That's, it feels like it's going to pop. Um, and so I use GABA midday. It, it kind of helps me with my afternoon slump. Cause what happens if I get a little slumpy in the afternoon, then it, so now it makes sense. I probably secrete more excitatory right. hormones and, and then I, I get tired and wired and then mm. I can't go to sleep. And so I take GABA like afternoon and then I take it right before bed again. And I, and so that's, that's cool. Well, see, this is my session. I just got my free session mm-hmm. with you. I learn so much every time I sit outside your door and listen to the sound bowls. <laughs> yeah. um, anything from a, from a food perspective. So with moving the chi, right? Like, so, so even in our cleanse, like a lot of people talk about don't eat, let your GI system rest. And I just drives me crazy because our GI system doesn't rest until three days after we're dead. So, so that one I kind of set aside, but movement of chi, chewing food, digestion, that also helps lower stress, right? It's one of the reasons why we stress eat. Isn't that, isn't that true? Cause yes. it activates our, okay. It activates yes. our parasympathetic nervous system. And so we start noshing and we start chewing and, and that actually helps to lower, I mean, it, cannot be necessarily the ideal situation. So if a person's feeling like stress eating, taking a minute and meditating, doing some, I'm going to, let's make that MP3 because I want our, I want my community to have your sound bowls and okay. anything else you want to, anything else you want to do for our community. I'm getting you guys a visit here. Um, I want them to try using that before they start stress eating because like I, I just, and then rubbing their ears rubbing if they're worried ears. about, yeah, like I, I have so many takeaways for myself personally from this interview. I'm, I'm actually very excited, but, but guys, if you feel, so now we understand like why we want to nosh, why we want to stress eat, right? It's part of stimulating that rest and digest. And and then afterwards you get that, everybody says, you know, I feel full. I have a food hangover and I'm, and I'm tired, but there's that nervous system surge that's happening. Right. So so let's meditate. Let's rub our ears. Let's let's listen to um, that audio that we're going to make for everybody. Yes. And okay, so my beloved community is out here. There, I'm sure have absolutely fallen in love with you. Um, everybody in Florida is going to come see you. Yes. And the yay, I know. Um, and then you know we're going to feel empowered, and we're going to. You guys can say, you know my Dr. Jackie said, it's okay for me to talk to you about acupuncture. And my Dr. Jackie said, it's okay, you know, for me to have a conversation about, about using lifestyle modification for hypertension. So, so you guys have, I always say everybody in my world is, is part of your world, right? They're part of your team. They're part of your community. And so we all just got, I have chills because I, I still need permission to advocate for myself on a daily. Um, and you giving us that permission, especially with your history and your background and all the people whose lives you've changed really means a lot. So mm-hmm. any parting words? Yeah, it's, it's, this is important. Like the fact, I know you're crazy busy. I know that you guys are doing major, major things, but I appreciate you taking time out. Um, because there's a lot of us, you know, it's not been an easy journey in, in, in our health. And it's kind of um, a lifeline to have people in your corner. That's for sure. Mm. Yeah. So any parting words for all of our beautiful people out there? Well, thank you so much, Haley. And I think, you know, like you mentioned, you're your community. I think we are all in this together as a community. And my purpose in this life is to heal and touch as many lives as possible. Ooh, wow. Well, you just expanded that to our platform and our world. And I can't tell you how much that means to me on behalf of 
all of us. So thank, thank you, you so much. And we will be talking again because I want to talk about menopause. <laughs> oh boy, that's a big one. <laughs> Let's it's a good it. one. All right. It's a, big one. I, it's a good one. And it's a big one. All right. We will talk soon. I will see you next week, actually. I'll talk yes. to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay, guys, I actually feel like I just got a lot of personal um, information that's going to continue to move me in a better place from a health and perspective. We're going to work together to um, get you guys a handout. I, I have loved GABA for years. I use it with our stress blend and um, formulated it with the magnesium, the, the um, taurine and the theanine, but to understand how it works with the excitogenic hormones. I mean, I, you know, me knowledge is power. I, I feel like it's going to work better even now for me because I understand why my body has been um, needing that and craving that having an autoimmune disorder, having, having tremendous stress, um, wanting to feel and do feel uh, amazing and incredible in my life and, and kind of accepting no other. So that was profound. Okay. A couple takeaways. Look, come see Jackie. She's in our Florida clinic. Our center for excellence that we're creating is world class and going to continue to evolve and add, you know, brilliant people like that. If you're not coming to Florida, don't worry about it. As you guys know, when I go around the world and I collect these people, these brilliant people that are doing incredible things in medicine, they're part of your team now too. And all of us, and I, and I heard this and I got chills and I just got chills again. Dr. Hunko just gave us permission to be curious about our health and wellness and to educate our physicians, to be leaders, right? in our medical journey, because we are the ones that experience it 24 seven. All right, guys, make it an amazing day. Don't forget to put power on your plate and just know that it is critical and it's important and you have permission to put you on your to-do list today.